In this video, you're going to learn how to really up-level your ejaculation control during sex, how you can get out of your head, be more confident, and really be in your body to, first of all, enjoy sex much more, experience much more pleasure, and have much more presence and enjoyment, and leave behind patterns of performance anxiety, self-doubt, and the overthinking mind that tend to plague a lot of men's sexual lives. So recently, I've been hearing from a lot of you guys, and there's, there's this common theme. What I'm basically hearing is this pattern of having developed a lot of skill, with the sexual kung fu techniques, with arousal control, ejaculation control, even non-ejaculatory orgasms during solo practice, during self-stimulation, but then still struggling during sex with a partner. So I'm gonna share my own insights about this because there's a lot to this, but I think you're gonna find some of these things extremely helpful that will help you to bridge the gap and to bring that mastery into sex with a partner. There's a lot of things here that I don't see addressed as much in, a, you know, a lot of the work that's out there on this stuff. And this has been a big journey for me as well, having to dive deep into this stuff for the past decade. So uh, yeah, we're gonna dig deep into this and I think you're going to get a lot out of this. I'm Jonathan White. I'm here to help you master your sexual energy so you can manifest your ideal life. If you're enjoying the content, hit the subscribe button to support the channel and make sure you get my free ejaculation control course through the link in the video description below. So obviously it's quite a journey learning sexual Kung Fu. Essentially, What's often happening here for men on this journey, it was certainly the case for me, and I see for most of you, it's, it's the same as well, is that you're essentially transitioning from this distorted impulsive connection to sexuality, where your body tends to be really stressed out and you often find yourself right at the edge of ejaculation and are controlled by that dynamic and limited by when is ejaculation going to happen? You know, patterns of premature ejaculation. And the other thing here can be uh, losing the erection during sex. And this is more so in the context of performance anxiety, which is a common factor in weak erections during sex. The whole thing here is transitioning out of this kind of stress ingrained response, this ingrained pathway of quickly reaching ejaculation and into a new paradigm of eventually complete ejaculation control where you only ejaculate when and if you choose to. And sex is now, sex and self-pleasure is now full of unlimited pleasure, unlimited orgasm, just massively, massively fulfilling and doesn't have to end except when you choose it to. That's kind of the goal, that's the vision. And I can say I've attained that. I have my off days every now and then, even, even the highest level athletes do, right? That's normal. But overall, I've been nothing short of, you know, amazed and, and grateful for the level of sexual experience I've been able to attain. And I'm seeing hundreds of other men do the same. I'm always hearing from you guys about the breakthroughs that you're having. You know, I've had some really amazing conversations in my one of my VIP training groups, just hearing from the progress men have been through, you know, overcoming their premature ejaculation, their porn addictions, people pleasing habits, stepping into a greater level of confidence, of purpose in their life, sexual control, and also being able to attract women, feeling confident to approach and attract women and things like that. So it's like, this is the path. This is what it is. And the first phase of the journey is kind of the solo. It's a solo practice. It's just getting to know your body and your arousal response. Um, because first of all, you've got to be able to control your ejaculation by yourself. That's, that's, that's kind of the first step, right? That's kind of the training wheels of it. And that alone is a, a phenomenal milestone when you are no longer like just jerking off and then five seconds later, you know, jerking off to porn and then ejaculating within a minute. Like when you're now able to enjoy solo cultivation, when you're able to enjoy sexual pleasure without the impulse to ejaculate right away and feel comfortable holding that energy in your body, and you have the control to do that. You have the, the endurance to do that for, you know, 15, 30 minutes, an hour, whatever. That's amazing. So like huge props to you when you attain that. And if you're still on the journey, that's fine. It is a journey. You know, I didn't get there overnight. But the next level now is how do I do that with a partner? Obviously, there can be a added level of difficulty when you're with a partner to control ejaculation, to really own the sexual kung fu practices. And the obvious pieces here are that there's more stimulation. You're with another body, you're with you're interacting with another nervous system, the visual stimulation, the 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 sights, the sounds, the the feelings, the sensations. It can be a lot. And so it's easy to be overexcited by that. You know, just on the most base level of like how we respond on an arousal level. So that's that's the first thing to address. And that's really what the sexual kung fu techniques do. You know, the, the foundational things, the breath, the energy circulation, the pelvic floor work, always the foundations of practice. And a lot of men, for them, that's all they need. But what goes beyond that, what I'm seeing is another huge factor to why ejaculation control can be more difficult when having sex with a woman or whoever you're having sex with, is that sex and intimacy with someone else, it's really where all of our stuff comes up. There's this deep vulnerability. You're naked. Engage with the most vulnerable area of your body, this area that we often have a lot of shame and guilt and like we, we have to hide away, you know what I mean? And so all that's out. 
So sex is where all of your inhibitions show up. It's where all of your negative self-talk, your self-doubt, your people-pleasing patterns, this is where everything is exposed. There's no hiding during sex. And that's one thing that makes this work so powerful is because you can experience so much transformation in your life when working with your sexual dynamic and realizing that this is just like a microcosm of how you interact with the world. This is an, it's a microcosm of how you feel about yourself, you know, your, your self-love, self-respect or lack thereof. And especially like how you feel about other people in general, like what kind of value you put on yourself and how much other people's approval is important to you. You know, people pleasing patterns. So all this is exposed in the bedroom. All of this is exposed during sex. So there's no hiding from it. So this is really the next level of work with this kind of thing. It's like, yeah, there's the sexual Kung Fu techniques and that's extremely important, but there's also looking at your sexual inhibitions, looking at your patterns of negative self-talk, your self-judgments, your self-doubts, and your people-pleasing patterns. Like how important it is to you to be validated by others, especially by women, to feel good about yourself, to feel like you've accomplished something. So first of all, really looking at these things, these aren't things that are really us. Your inhibitions are not you. These are all things that we were taught. These are things we often picked up from our parents, from our teachers, our friends, you know, religious figures, whatever it is. These are things we picked up. So it's like put another load in this backpack you're carrying around. It's one of my teachers always says, it's like putting another brick in your backpack to carry around. And you have to understand that you weren't born with these things. You weren't, you know, personally, I wasn't born being a people pleaser. I didn't give a shit about what other people thought when I was a young child. I used to wear purple sweatpants and like rainbow shirts and just run around playing in the dirt with a broom. Like that was me at you know, six years old. I didn't give a shit. But somewhere down the line, it became a priority for me to feel like everyone around me approved of me, approved of the clothes I was wearing, how I looked, how my voice sounded, the things I said, literally everything. And of course, sex is a big one. I needed to make sure that my sex was just right, that I didn't say anything weird or sound weird. So it's just, you see how it's an extension of, of these, these patterns that we carry around. So here's a common situation. You're a man and you're pretty functional in your day-to-day -day life. Like, you know, it's like, you know, you're, you're holding a job, you're making some money, you're, you're doing the things you enjoy. You've got a good social life. On the outside, it looks like everything's great. You know, oh yeah, Jim's really got his shit together. But then you engage in intimacy and all of a sudden you find yourself in a state of nervousness. You feel very unconfident. You're questioning yourself. You're wondering, am I going to, what if I ejaculate too quickly? Do I even know what she likes? Like, what if she doesn't have an orgasm? What if I can't get it up? What if I ejaculate too quickly? Does she like the things I'm saying? Does she like how I touch this? Does my dick look weird? Does my voice sound weird? So this is how a lot of men's minds are during sex. I started to realize this was me. It's, it's overthinking overanalyzing, just, oh, is this, is that, is this, is that. So you see how this is, first of all, the most obvious thing is that it's putting you in stress mode. It's putting you in fight or flight mode. And if you've been following my channel, doing this work, you probably know that being in that sympathetic nervous system fight or flight mode is not conducive, first of all, to vitality, to a balanced nervous system. And it's definitely not conducive to having good erections or strong ejaculation control. In fact, it has the opposite effect. So why does this happen? Somewhere in the past, you made a decision or you know, a conscious or unconscious decision that the most important thing for you was for the people around you to accept you, to, to validate you, to feel comfortable around you in some way, and to make sure that you never displease anyone. And now there can be other factors to this as well, but this is a very common one. So basically what's happening here is that now your belief system, your, your operating system, and we're not even often aware of these things, but basically your operating system is that your feeling of self-worth, your feeling of good, feeling safe, feeling okay, is not based upon how you feel about yourself. It's based upon how others feel about you. So basically your center is no longer within yourself. It's someone else. It's someone else's opinion of you. It's someone else's feelings about you. It's someone else's belief about you. So that's now the most important thing to you. And guess what? You have no control over that. And we may manipulate our behavior. The most common thing for men is to be more nice, to be overly nice, to make sure they don't displease anyone, the nice guy patterns. But all this is doing is you're putting on a mask. You're no longer being authentic, you're being fake and people don't actually see the real you. And I would say that, you know, 99% of the time, this actually makes you a lot less interesting to people. It makes you very timid. It makes you a bit spineless because you're afraid to say what's true for you. You're afraid to do what you really want to do. So all of your behavior becomes contrived on like, well, what, what, would, what do I think my partner would like instead of what would I like to do with my partner? You, you see what I'm saying here? And the big thing here is inhibition, feeling embarrassed about like dirty talking, feeling embarrassed about 
touching your body and showing your partner like, I want him to touch me here, baby. About just taking charge and like, when you obviously have a level of consent, throwing her on the bed, ripping her clothes off and just like being in that primal assertive mode. And instead of just like doing the thing that you want to do, and just going for sex, going for pleasure, just enjoying it. There's this constant voice saying, I don't know if she likes this. I don't know if they like this. I think I'm, you know, what if I ejaculate too fast? What if I do something they don't like? So it's this, this constant nagging self-doubt that's pulling you into stress, essentially. So to sum it up here, to, to really simplify it, basically you go into sex and you get stuck in your head. You're thinking, you're thinking, thinking, thinking. And instead of being embodied in your in your belly, in your balls, and in your cock, in your sexual primal nature, your masculine presence, you're stuck up in your head. And it's diminishing your sexual vitality, your sexual control, and it's putting you in fear mode. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh shit, this is totally what I've been doing. What I encourage you to do is, is really look into your other areas in your life. Like look into your social dynamics, look into how you interact with others. Do you feel like you can just be free and open and spontaneous with others? Or do you feel like there's a lot of contrivance? Like you have to say the right things, you're always like, Wondering, oh, should I say that? I shouldn't have said that. Uh, maybe you feel really stifled, like you have a hard time, you know, you feel really self-conscious about speaking, engaging with others, and you avoid social situations. So this is often the pattern that when you have inhibitions, you're inhibited. It's socially, it's sexually. These are all, we could say, different levels of intimacy and exchanging, connecting with others. So when you're blocked up, it shows in all aspects of your life. So as far as like, well, shit, what do I do about this now? How do I overcome this? Just being aware of that, the fact that this often carries over into all areas of your life, you know, you can start to adjust accordingly. Then the most important thing is to realize that you should not be concerned on whether other people accept you or not. Guess what? You're not a young child anymore. You are now your own parent. You are now your own caretaker. And if you displease the people around you, you're not going to die. If you speaking your mind and saying you're, you know, speaking your true desires is having a negative reaction from others, that's not really your burden to carry. You know, you can't control how other people feel. People will either love you or they will hate you. When you start really being yourself, you will have much stronger reactions from people and it won't always be positive. So you have to be careful with that. Now, I wanna make a, a point here that I'm not saying that, you know, expressing yourself freely and expressing your desires obviously should also always be within, you know, legal <laughs> boundaries and not violating anyone else's free will or safety. I have to say that. But it's really about stepping into your primal, uninhibited sexual nature in the bedroom. And a lot of that starts with self-practice. It starts with being able to connect to yourself, love yourself, freely, openly, being able to pleasure yourself open and freely. That's why self-pleasure is such an important practice. In my Sex God program, a part of the training is centered around a self-pleasure program, self-pleasure practices to deepen this connection and this love for your body. And then there's tons of work in there around breaking these sexual inhibitions and stepping into your true, bold, authentic nature because it is a process. But here's some very practical things you can take right away into the bedroom that will help you have better ejaculation control and just have a better time in general. First of all, the sexual Kung Fu practices, the breathing techniques, the energy circulation, the pelvic floor relaxation, that is all something to, to give your mind something to focus on because when the pattern is overthinking, well, you need to stop thinking. So what can you do instead of thinking? Focus on things that are happening within your body. Focus on your breath. Focus on releasing tension. States of stress and overthinking and nervousness are always connected to physical tension. So you release the physical tension, it releases that nervousness and that, that blockage within your body. And all of a sudden, you're much more present and expansive. And here's something I think is gonna be very helpful for a lot of you, which is don't make your partner's pleasure your number one priority. Like there's this tendency for the nice guy pattern to be like, okay, well, making sure she's happy, she feels good about me. We kind of tend to put women on this pedestal of like, if I don't worship her and 100% satisfy her ultimate satisfaction, then like the relationship's gonna fall apart or I'm not gonna get sex. But what happens is this turns you into a people pleaser to where you're just kind of overstepping. You're no longer taking care of your own needs, your own desires, and you're just kind of like smothering this other person and like, well, is that enough? What do you want more of this? You want that? What, do you, what else can I do? And it's like, it has the opposite effect and it, it keeps you constantly stuck in your head of like, does she feel good about me? Did I touch her just right? She didn't have an orgasm. So you start to focus more on your own pleasure. And this is often abrasive and hard to hear when you have kind of the nice guy patterns. It was to me when I first heard this type of thing because it, it often shows that you do not value your own needs being met. You do not prioritize, first of all, taking care of yourself. But guess what? When you start to focus on yourself, you start to focus on your own pleasure during sex. Instead of like, what do I think they would want me to do? What do you wanna do? What kind of sex do you wanna have? How do you want your body to be touched? Tell her to do it, make it happen. 
you throw her in the position that you want. And, and again, this is always with consent, just go for it. So it no longer becomes about what do I think they would want? That's always a contrivance. And you simply do what you want to do. Step into your assertive masculine primal sex beast and just fucking go for it. And guess what? You're no longer in thinking mode. You're simply doing the thing, enjoying it. And because that is in the masculine polarity, you're taking charge and you're unleashing your inner primal sex beast. You feel hornier. You have a stronger erection. You feel more of that fuck yeah energy. And you feel good. It gets you low in your body. It gets you in your cock, gets you in your genitals. And now you're grounded. You're present instead of stuck in your head thinking you're simply doing. Now, I have to say here that of course it's important to have, you know, to make sure your partner has pleasure. Like I'm not saying like, don't give a fuck about your partner. People tend to go in these extremes. Like, well, if, if I'm not 100% focused on my partner, I must be 100% focused on myself. That's not it either. It's just prioritizing your pleasure because generally what I found is during sex, when I'm simply going for like what I would really enjoy, what I really want to do, it's a little more authentic. There's more spontaneity to it. And typically that's when my partner is also enjoying herself the most. And when both people are doing that during sex, that's really, really great sex. When both partners are just like in their heads worried about, does he think I'm ugly? I don't know if this is going to work. It creates this contrivance and this, this separateness and, and tends to actually diminish polarity. So to sum up what I'm saying here, um, <laughs> there's often this pattern of overthinking and, and inhibition. And what, something I didn't mention was this is often tied into past sexual experiences you've had, being stuck in the past, Maybe you had a, an experience of premature ejaculation or an experience where you couldn't get it up. Maybe your partner made fun of you, they shamed you, and you're still carrying around that baggage. So you go to have sex, you're reenacting the past. So the remedy to that is to overcome these inhibitions, develop self-love for yourself, own your own self-pleasure, own your own sexuality, then bring that into sex with the partner, getting out of your head, being in complete presence, being in complete like, let's just fucking do this, like, gah. and that is going to dramatically shift your sexual dynamic. And you may notice in this video, I didn't really talk about like techniques or me mechanics of ejaculation control because obviously a lot of the other sexual Kung Fu practices you may or may not have heard of by now go more into that kind of stuff, the more mechanical technical practices. You know, you can find those in a lot of my other videos. But what I'm trying to get to here is when you're in the state of presence, not in your head, not worried about what's going to happen, but simply there being, enjoying, you're typically in a much more parasympathetically dominant state. Your nervous system is much more balanced. So naturally, ejaculation control does not become an issue because you're not overwhelmed with, with this stress and this nervousness and this tension that's driving you towards ejaculation. So one of the biggest things here is simply having presence and confidence within yourself, which comes through time working with this, that develops effortless ejaculation control. And of course, paired with the sexual Kung Fu techniques, that's how you really develop complete sexual mastery. So if you really contemplate what I've shared here and look at how you have these patterns within your life and you start to address them, I guarantee you're going to notice some profound shifts, not just in your sex life, but in your day-to-day -day life, your own self-esteem and your own feelings of self-worth and how you start to interact with others more authentically and boldly. And if you're really interested in going on this path of development, I highly recommend going through my programs because they're structured in a specific way so that you are constantly progressing through this system of sexual energetic personal development. The most intensive trainings are my multi orgasmic man course and my sex god course. Those are your paths to sexual mastery. You can find more information about those in the description of this video. If you'd like to see me make more videos on overcoming these sexual inhibitions and the nice guy patterns, let me know in the comments below. Make sure you give the video a like, support the channel, hit subscribe, and have a great day, my friend.